the lights are off there's only this panel besides the door that dimly lights up my little cube dips the environment in a relaxing haze of what they call hyper Eve Klein blue and it only shows the outlines of my desk, my bed and some of my collected belongings on the desk and on my walls. I think these are really special times. It's hard to imagine how things were before when there was no hyper Eve Klein blue home lightning color standard. People always had to see all the colors. It must have felt exhausting. Now, everything is just comfortably drowned out in this blur of blue, which kind of whispers, don't pay attention, stuff is working. I glance over to the left and catch a glimmer of something I really don't want to remember. In the darkness on the desk over my bed lie the fragments that used to make up my beloved vintage hologram rose. Earlier today I had accidentally dropped it from the ledge it had been standing on since the very first day I would moved into my cube. It's sad to see it lying there. The petals are broken from its stem, yet it still flickers in the bluely lit darkness. My family had the hologram rose in its possession for a century of cycles. It is in fact one of the most special digital possessions we have ever owned. When I was young, I was often told it was a one-of-a-kind static function object, hailing from the times of image rendering. And the rose had always spoken to my imagination. I think the holographic object is even the very reason why I have become a media archaeologist in the first place. But now, when I see it lying there in front of me on the desk, broken, when I look at it, the petals still seem to reveal something. I had recognized this earlier as well, these black and white patterns. They're reminiscent of these old days of image compression. It triggers a sense of nostalgia in me. It reminds me of something i read a long time ago about the early days of the digital when images still used compression of course today data is no longer compressed anything you could possibly need is just right here generated on the spot the client side pulled out of the pool of everything imaginable but back in those good old days of image compression, when media were still limited and restricted by platforms and bandwidth limitations. Not all images had been rendered yet, in fact, some images couldn't even be created or displayed. This is actually exciting to think about, things were just a little harder back then. It reminds me of this beautiful account written in this old reader that was released for, I think it was an an exhibition about impossible images. Let me see, I, I must have it somewhere. Right, here it is. So this used to be an exhibition about the relations between resolutions and compromise within image rendering. And it took place in a time that display technologies actually still used pixels. So that's a while back. I think there's this chapter by Fabian 
Heller. Let's see here. Ah, yeah. All possible images. Right. Yeah, so in this text, Heller describes his wish for a total number of all possibly displayed images on a full HD display. So he writes, once the specifications of the hardware on which a digital image is displayed are known, the number of all images that could possibly be rendered can be calculated. For example, a display with the standard resolutions of 1920 by 1080, so full HD, and a 24-bit RGB color space, so true color, is composed of 2,073,600 pixels, each of which can take on one of the 16,777,216 colors. Wow. So by simply exponentiating these two numbers, all images that can be shown on this one display can be calculated. Also he writes something like, as it turns out, the number was simply too large to display on one screen. It just consisted of too many digits. So in this chapter, Heller also describes how the number is simply beyond what is imaginable at human scale. That actually, it makes me wonder, like, as a media archaeologist, I've learned that the first rule of rendering technologies was that resolutions don't just refer to the ways we make something work, but also always to a compromise of other modes of working. But I kind of see a paradox, like, now that we're living in a time in which images never finish rendering, maybe not all images can be rendered anyway. I mean, we did away with the rendering technologies in order to transform images. I'm, I feel confused. It opens this whole trove of imagination that we kind of stepped away from. Since we implemented the generative rendering at client's end, the generative pre-trained transformers, so the GPTs, kind of got an unlimited resolution. And so the previous great age of technological solutionism suddenly got known as the age of great compromise. Which is also what they describe when they speak about that moment when the angel of history learned to see her own demise. She got caught up in this net of pre-trained transforms and her head was kind of suddenly turned around. She no longer had to see the past and all its compromises but suddenly saw the future and all it would instill. All the futures right there at the tip of her wings, which is a grim sight. I glance back at the hologram rose. The black and white patterns, they're not very clear, but after revisiting the decalibration target earlier today, I am convinced that in fact I can discern a discrete cosine transform pattern. Us, media archaeologists, are actually so extremely lucky that the IRD built the decalibration target. I think it was painted in the 20s, so that's about a century of cycles ago. It's the oldest digital monument of the outside world. It was supposed to function as a repository for obsolete compressions, specifically those based on DCTs, so discrete cosine transforms, which were the transforms that were superseded by the GPTs. And DCTs were used in compressions such as the JPEG, the MPEG, digital video broadcasting, and they are kind of those compressions that govern the realms of image compression. So before the Great Wall of the Future was breached, and the GPTs took over, just when compression fell into obsolescence, this was kind of like the standard to be used. Okay, I got this flyer. I picked it up from the decalibration target, let's see.
decalibration target serves as a monument and cache of research on the JPEG image compression standard. The IRD are not a traditional institute. Instead, they multiplex the term institution by revisiting its usage from the late 1970s. Wow, okay. So in this context, formulated by Joseph Koga and Rod Burstall, institutions refer to a framework that deals with the growing complexities of digital technologies. They build bridges between logical and non-logical systems, inspired by the idea of hyperfunctional yet illogical frameworks. The IRD are dedicated to research the interests of anti-utopic, obsolete, lost and unseen or simply too good to be implemented resolutions. Okay, cool. So hopefully with the help of the information in this flyer, I can actually fix the broken layers of the hologram rows. So on the second page of the flyer, it actually has a digital repository for JPEGs. It's here. The JPEG compression consists of six steps. Step one, color space transformation. Step two, image downsampling. Step three, block splitting. Step four, the discrete cosine transform. Okay. Step five, quantization, a process that discards coefficients with values that are deemed irrelevant. This process of quantization is optimized to the human eye, tried and tested on just the Lena color test card. Wow. Would that mean that the JPEG compression is actually only tested on a white woman? Like, that's kind of racist. I have heard of technologies having a bias encoded within them. I mean, even GPTs are bias conformational. History's just been really repeating itself. Okay, and then there's a six step entropy coding. When I'm looking at the hologram rows, it shows that a composite object can reveal unknown unknowns, layers that one normally doesn't see. They revealed themselves when the rows fell and these layers kind of got disentangled and outside of their normal formations. When I look up close, every surface kind of still seems to show the whole image of the hologram rows. But the shredded sides of the object, so the cuts, these delta axes, they kind of reveal previously invisible render layers. I see different render elements in these objects like render passes and discorrelated instances and metadata that is needed to properly render the hologram in any variety of possible resolutions. It's like these threads, they've kind of become their own portals to moments of a past that I was never part of. These threads show artifacts from the times when artistic entrepreneurs still claimed their work on blockchain hashes. This must be from just after the great future had been initiated and the epoch of decentralization and GPTs and machine learning started to take over. I'd like to study the petals of the rose a little more. These fragments seem to have been acquired via an ERC721 protocol, which is like a proof of provenance from before the breach of the open sea. And look here, it seems to reveal that the origins of the hologram rose must have been imported via a client called Meta. I mean, this is so iconic. Each shredded petal reveals a part of the rose from a different layer that has its own mode of rendering, like simple passes, an ID layer, here I see a probing opacity pass, a bump map, a nested controlled axis here, the DOI, which is like a layer that was registered in this great library, the Z library, which is exciting. Here a panel that features the data about the rose's smell, primed by Amazon, the great distributor. And then, what is this? CRISPR clone data? That can't be right. 
because the breach of the open sea was a direct result of the inscription of CRISPR clone data inside the final NFT. What does it say? This render may populate fungible st strings? This render may populate fungible strings? I remember reading about right-click safe and how it turned into right-click transcode. That's when the NFT holders huddle to try and save their once so dearly pinned JPEGs from the interplanetary file system protocol. It was the time when several image compressions were falling into obsolescence all at once and the precious images just started to fall in unreadable disrepair. That's when the slogan, I right-click transcode to save digital heritage, became a slogan used in memes. This hologram rose shows that it's a technology from before the breach of the open sea and the fall of the Great Wall of the Future. Imagine technology from before the fall of the Great Wall of the Future. That was an era when the gems of the internet were still the shadow libraries, and serendipity was still a normal part of daily practice. It was before the growing application of GPTs, when transforms only transformed data and didn't just generate it yet. Before the future just started to regurgitate itself, and serendipity was just a feature of the past. Now the world has just been mapped and collected in its entirety. I mean, every book has been indexed and scanned into OCR. All horizons have been printed and nothing is impossible anymore. Everything ever possible just sits in my pool of transforms. With everything indexed and answered, everything is always making sense. We can always find what we're looking for. Everything is at the tip of our thoughts. Things are just working. Whatever I can think of, it's always right there. And actually still, some things just feel wrong. It's like when we slip past the event horizon of the functional information market. When the great wall of the future was breached, things just have come to a stop. We've arrived. The future is here. But it feels like we're just continuously floating aimlessly in an ocean of everything. We're walled by the past. A wall of time has just flipped. Everything is full of options. But no one asks any questions anymore. There are no more problems to tackle, no more protests, no more boycotts, no more cancelling. No more upgrades, no more signing in, no more transfer of data. At once, everything has arrived. I am living this new boring human. I've become this thin client in a network without a purpose. Where the value of the unsought has disappeared and serendipity has vaporized. Everything is just smothered within this hue of hyper eve climb blue ah